Sabino and Gonorrhitas. going to read us. <laughs> that's, that's busting a move to me. Uh, and, and, and anyway, you know, you, you, you having fun? Were they, were they nice or what, man? Was that sweet? <laughs> Praise the Lord. Michael, would you stand and ask God's blessing on the word? Ask him to bless me as I preach today. Amen. Hey, listen, if, if there's any small children now, you can be released out that way. They have another church for you now. They're, they're already starting some, but you can go ahead around. Where do they go? Just go to the street. Stand in the middle of the street there. <laughs> no, no, follow the deacons back there downstairs. I'm just joking. <laughs> yeah, well. <laughs> you happy to be here? Mm. 338, man. You know, sometimes God gives you stuff you don't even ask for. I like that. For the last couple of weeks, we've been preaching on the cries from the cross, or the seven words from the cross, as some theologians call them. This is my little prayer walk thing. I can't walk around in Allentown. Southbury, they just think I'm crazy, but in Allentown, they'll think I got a weapon and I'm a serial killer or something, you know. But it reminds me that I didn't have to put one of these through me. You know what I mean? Amen. It reminds me. But for the past couple of weeks, what we've been doing, we've taken you to Matthew, and we showed you what happened at the crucifixion. What happened there? And there were seven cries that happened, and we put that cross there so you could see it. If someone could pull that screen down for me right up to the line, please, so that the text could be behind me. I want you to look at that cross for a second. And Jesus cried seven, seven utterances, seven words came from his lips when he was there. A few, a few weeks ago, I told you the first cry, I told you the first cry was a prayer of forgiveness. Write that down if you're not. If you need the whole series, they have it upstairs for you. You can buy it for a buck. Give it to a friend. But, but I think it's important that you know because I think it's relevant, especially today, there's going to be relevancy. Number one, he said... Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. And then that one scripture we got, the sermon. Father, first of all, he called them, he acknowledged them as Abba, my father. He acknowledged his sonship. Father. Then he said, forgive them. Forgive who? Them, all of them. The Roman soldier, the high priest, the Sanhedrin, everyone that denied me, everyone that would... Forgive them. And then Jesus does the most awesome thing on that first utterance. Father, forgive them. He says, for they know not what they do. He makes an excuse for you. How many of you ever had somebody make an excuse for you? They know you're wrong and they lie anyway. Now, he didn't lie. He, he really knew that we just didn't know what we were doing. That we were executing the king of glory. Amen? And that was the first cry was a prayer. We said, we said when he says, Father, he begins, it's a prayer. The first cry is a prayer. He's talking to his daddy. The second one was what? Anybody remember? The second one was a promise he made. So if the first, first cry was a prayer of forgiveness, the second one was a promise. It was a promise of salvation. Remember I told you he's hanging on the center cross. On the one side, there's, there's a guy, that uh, a thief or a criminal, they call him a malfactor. We don't know what he did wrong, but he's on the cross getting ready to die. On the, on the other side, there's another cross, and he's ready to die. And the one begins to, 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 to rail at him, they call it. A nice word for cussing him out. And he says to him, if you save the other, save yourself. And I says, well, you cause blind men to see, lame men to walk, impaired people to hear. Save yourself and us as well. And, and so he begins to, to ridicule Jesus. But the one on the other side says, it says he looked over towards him while he was hanging. He says, don't you fear God, for we are gaining our just reward. But this man has done nothing wrong. And then he said these words, Lord. He said, Lord. He called him Lord. He didn't say, hey, man. Hey, bro, homeboy. Hey, panita, compay. He said, Lord, 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 deity, God, sovereign. 
Son of the Most High God, remember me. When you come into your kingdom, I know you're not going to be hanging on that tree for long. I know you're not going to be hanging. I know those nails are going to come off and you're going to resurrect. And, and when you come into your kingdom, remember me. And Jesus turns and the second utterance was a promise. If the first was a prayer, the second was a promise. He says, this day you will, not might, not could be, not should be, not is a potential. He said, you will be with me in paradise. A promise. Then we had the third cry. And the third cry we said, the third cry is when Jesus is hanging on the cross and he looks down. It's still light out. I want you to remember it's still light out. And as he's looking down, he's, he's, he's looking down and he sees Mary and his mama. The two Marys are there, right or wrong. And he sees them there and it says, in the word of God, it says, and John was in the distance, not, not really hiding, but not really close because the Roman soldiers could tell him, get away from here if you don't want to be number four or if you don't want a weapon, right? So he was like near them, but just at a distance. And, and it says, the third cry was a cry of, write this down, affection. Affection. Now keep these in mind. Come on. Cry number one is what? A prayer of forgiveness. Cry number two was a promise of eternity, salvation. Cry number three was an affection for the ones he was going to be disconnected from. Are you with me? Somebody say amen. amen. A cry of affection. He looks down and he sees his mother crying tears thinking, my baby, look at what they've done to my little baby that I held in my hands. Look what they've done to him. He's, he's stuck on that cross. These, these Roman guards got these big giant pieces of wood and they're ready to break their knees now. You know, look what they've done to my baby. Look at him bleeding. And he looks down and his third cry was the cry of affection for the ones he loved. He was trying to show them he was taking care. And, and he said, her mother, mother, look at your son, John. John, behold thy mother. And it says in scripture from that day forward, she went to live with John. Are you following me? The third cry was where Jesus validated family. He validated that we need one another. He validated that here, he couldn't just leave and leave a mom broken hearted, crushed on her knees, watching her one baby die. He knew he had to connect her to somebody the same way he's connecting you and I. Everybody follow me so far? Matthew, take me to Mark 15, 34 and 35. Mark 15. 34 and 35. I want you to notice now the fourth cry or the fourth utterance. But I want you to notice something before you look there. Jesus, please, I'm begging you right now, Father. This is my prayer that you would open our hearts to receive from you. Father, change in me whatever you need to change in me right now, Lord God. It's not about eloquence of speech, Lord. I need the message not to hit the mind, but to hit the heart. So, Lord, I pray you anointing, Lord. Lord, anoint this, anoint this man, Lord Jesus. Anoint this body. Anoint this mind. Anoint these lips to preach thy word. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. 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 Somebody pray for me. Amen. 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 Preach the word. Somebody say, preach the word. The fourth cry says, at the ninth hour, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani, which means, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Take me to Matthew 27 for a moment, and then bring me back there, but just take me to Matthew 27, 45, 6, and 7. Matthew 27, starting at verse 45. I want you to notice something. From the sixth hour, that means 12 o'clock noon, by the way. They had four watches of the night. From the sixth hour, hour until the ninth hour, darkness came over all the land. And folks, the first thing I want you to see, if you're writing notes down, number one, are the events surrounding this cry. The fourth cry. I'm not even going to tell you what the fourth cry is yet. But I want you to notice something. The events surrounding this fourth cry. First of all, he says, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani. And now there were Jews. There were high priests. There were guests all over from Jerusalem, from all over the place. 
There were Hebrews. There were all kinds of people there for the festival of the Passover. And yet, take a look at what happens. For three hours, there's darkness. There was darkness. And you would think only darkness of sky, only darkness of atmosphere, only darkness of the place. But there was also darkness of soul. There was also confusion. It says, and many that were around that heard him say, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani. They would say, what is he talking about? Is he calling Elijah the prophet to get him down? Now these are the priests. These are supposed to be the scholars in language, the scholars of the word of God, scholars of the Old Testament. And yet they could not understand Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani. Why? Why if everything else is translated in English, would they put something in a foreign language for us? You see, there was a reason it was there in a foreign language. There was a reason that God put it in that language. God was trying to send us a message. And, oh, in the very next verse, he tells us what it means. My God, my God, why has thou forsaken me? And we think we got it, but we missed it. We missed it. But I believe the Lord is going to show us what it was. From the sixth hour until the ninth hour, darkness came over all the land. Check that out. Darkness. After, after he had given his prayer of forgiveness, after, after he had given his promise of salvation, after he had disconnected and given his mother back a son to care, it turned dark for three hours, darkness. And then next verse, 46. About the ninth hour, Jesus cried with a loud voice. Folks, he wasn't exhausted. He wasn't tired. He wasn't, he wasn't, he wasn't at the point of death. It says he cried with a loud voice. Folks, there's reason why that emphasis is there. He said, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani, which means, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? 47. When some of those standing there heard this, they said, he's calling Elijah. Who's he calling? It says, so just mocked him. Take me back one verse. Think about that verse there. Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani. Think, number one, of the events surrounding the fourth cry. There was darkness in the land. They didn't have pp and L back then. You couldn't see. There wasn't street lights. Uh, there was torches hanging around. And you couldn't see. There was darkness around the land. It had turned dark. And folks, what I wanted you to see this morning is, is just something that it just, it blew my mind when I read this over and over. And I'm saying, God, give me something deeper. I know, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? But give me something with more depth. I need to go deeper here, Lord. He said, I'm going to show you something. I, 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 I could feel the Holy Spirit begin to speak in my heart. He said, I'm going to show you something here. He said, it was dark. He said, I want you to notice something, Jimmy. You got to go back to the first three cries. I'm thinking, what do you mean? I've already done those. I can't preach them again. He said, you got to go back. There was a promise of what was number one, forgiveness. Well, guess what? Imagine me forgiving you, right? The more I forgive you, the more I draw closer to you. Am I right or wrong? But the further I go away from God. Then imagine you being a sinful man or woman. And now I promise you salvation. The more I get close to you, the further I get from God my Father. And then number three, remember now I'm saying I'm going to take care of you. And the closer I get to sin, the further I get from God. Has everybody got me yet or not? The further I, listen, the, the, closer, the closer Jesus came to humanity, the further he went from the Father. Is anyone following that? Listen to me. How, how many of you have ever really had, had I'm, I'm talking about a belly cry, where we like, <laughs> uh, uh, something like that, where you got like snot running out and everything, you can't control nothing, you need like napkins, you know, you, you're wiping like anything that you got, your pockets, everything, right? Anybody know what I mean? I'm not trying to make you laugh, I'm asking you about something else. How many of you, when somebody does something, how many of you ever had a moment? How many of you know what a moment is? Somebody does for something for you unexpected, you go, oh. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't. I go. Nobody. Right or right. That's a moment. Anybody ever have a moment? Right. How many of you ever been cool during a moment? Oh, oh, I thank you very much. I think that this will really be beneficial for my savings account. I'm sure that it'll help with my CDs and my 401k. And, and, uh, and, and uh, certainly I'll be able to maybe make some other investments. That'll probably be able to propel my, my portfolio a little bit too. Uh, uh, you know, I mean, I really think that this is good. Thank you very much, by the way. And thank all the people who helped you to, uh, to bless me in such a way. How many of you ever had a moment like that? Listen to me. Are you, 
we don't have those moments where everything is cool. When you have a real moment, it comes down to the real you. You see, one thing, I want you to look at the moments there. There was darkness, there was darkness of the earth, but there was, always, there was also darkness of agony of soul. There was disconnection there. I checked that language out. Eloi, Eloi, lava, samaktani. Do you know what it means? It's, it's, listen to me. It is written in the original Syriac. In the original, let me show you something. I, I got a little, a little something, something here for you. Take me, take me to 2 Kings 18, 26. Watch this. And by the way, Syriac means Aramaic. How many of you know that? Syriac translated means Aramaic. Then Elakim. Can't wait to name my next son that. Son of el Kehiah and Shebna and Joah said to the field commander, Please speak to your servants in the Aramaic. Syriac, speak to us in Aramaic since we understand it. Don't speak to us in Hebrew in the, in, in the hearing of the people on the wall. What was he saying? Take me to another one. Take me, listen. Uh, 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 where's it at in Isaiah? Isaiah 36, 11. Let me show you something. This is Old Testament language. You see, every time Jesus said something, he was always saying it for everybody to hear. Father, forgive them, Abba. I want you all to hear. Today you will be with me in paradise. Woman, behold your mother. Everything was always for everybody to hear. This time, it was a personal cry. Write that down, number two. A personal cry. It was something personal. Our Jesus, listen, the closer he got to saving me and you, the farther he got disconnected from God. He shows that in the fact that he doesn't even call him Abba. He doesn't call him Father. He doesn't call him Elohim, Jehovah, Adonai. He doesn't call him Nisi, none of those. He says, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani. My God, my God. Eloi, my God. Check out it. And Elakaim, Shebna and Joab said to the field commander, please, this is the same verse spoken hundreds years later the same time and this is a prophet look at this it says speak to us your servants in aramaic since we understand it are you following me he said we understand this and for some of you today you're understanding this you see that world out there won't understand why did they why is that the one thing that they put in some weird language in the bible if everything else is in english why even put it in there's a reason for it he was trying to let you know, hey, I'm in soul agony. I'm not trying to talk to the priest. I'm not talking to the Jews. I'm not talking to the Romans. I'm not talking to the people. So I'm not. I'm talking to God. And when I learned as a baby, I learned in Syriac, Eloi, Eloi, God, God, God. He's saying this is not a time for daddy. He says, I'm alone. I feel disconnected. He says, my God, the closer I've come to you, the further I feel from my father. Matter of fact, right now, I don't even feel like I got a father. But I got a God. Anybody follow me yet? Come on now, somebody get it. Come on, you got to get this. This ain't going to go here. This has got to go here. He was telling him, he said, he said, he said, listen, he said, he said, I've, I'm taking on so much of your garbage my own daddy can't look at me. My own father can't look at me. He had to turn his face. Because I look so much like you. I'm taking on all your garbage. And so he's turned his face on me. He's turned his face. Eloi, Eloi. Laba Samakdani, my God, my God. Why have you forsaken me? But didn't Jesus say I'd never leave you to forsake you? Doesn't God say in his word in Proverbs, I'm a friend who sticks closer than a brother? Doesn't, doesn't he say, he's, I'm your rock, I'm your hill, I'm your fortress, I'm your armor bearer, I'm your forward, I'm your rear guard, I'm your upper guard, I'm your below guard, I'm all around you? He says, I'm all around the helpless. He says, I chase the one sheep that runs away, I chase him. I leave 99 and go after one. Doesn't he say that? How can someone say, Elo, Elo, Laba Samakhtani, unless they're so agony? You see, in those moments, as he gives forgiveness, he becomes more like us. As he gives the promise of eternity, he becomes more like us. As he disconnects from his mother, he becomes more like us. And at this point, it gets dark. 
And why is it dark? Because God the Father is not shining there. God the Father, because of the look of sin. First Peter says, God is holy and he cannot bear to look at sin. He literally turns his face away. Not because he didn't love his baby, but in a judicial sense, if God sees sin and the blood of Jesus ain't on it, he must kill it. Are you following me? So he turns away and it turns dark. And he cries this cry of soul agony. Eloi, Eloi. The people didn't even know it. The scholars didn't know it. The Romans didn't know it. The Jews didn't know the language. Nobody knew what he was saying. It was in Syriac. It was in the, listen, it was in the language of a baby like he's crying. Eloi, Eloi, love us so much, honey. Why'd you forsake me? What do you mean? I'm here, but I feel so all alone. I'm here, but I feel so all alone. I'm here, but I feel so all alone. Any of you ever had that time in your walk when you feel alone? Who moved? Where? See, the closer you go to the world, the further you go from God. Did you get that or do you need me to repeat that? Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Wow, I learned quickly. What kind of cry was this? Was this a cry of loneliness? No. No. I've even preached that. I'm wrong. I'm sorry. Changed my mind. The cry of loneliness? God made man because God was lonely. No, God's got angels flapping their wings saying, Holy, holy, holy is the Lamb. Holy is the Lord of hosts forever and ever and ever. And they sing much better than we do. Believe me, he didn't make us, and it certainly ain't for our singing ability, you know? And Britney Spears does lip sync. And, and, and anyway, so just, <laughs> you know? It's amazing to me, man. You want to be famous, you got to be lesbian or gay. I like being a boy. I just like being a boy. I like girls. That's Debbie. Debbie been losing weight, man. Curves, and she been going to curves. <laughs> she goes to curves. I go to the Y. I can catch her. <laughs> we play superhero. Yeah. Last night we were playing catch the nurse. <laughs> just joking. Just trying to make you laugh. Go ahead, laugh. Enjoy yourself. Just be warned. When you laugh, there's a missile coming. Hello. <laughs> mm. This cry was a personal cry. This, uh, this cry was a cry of one who was disconnected, number three. Was one who was disconnected. How many of you ever felt disconnected? And today, come on, put your hands up honestly. And today, you can answer the question. Because the cry from the cross gives us the answer. You see, Jesus says, you want to see it? There was a time, look, remember you? How many of you ever said this? I remember when I was so close to Jesus and I used to pray so much, right? And then I stopped. I remember when I used to get on my knees every single day, <laughs> right? Then I stopped. Debbie thinks I'm so spiritual. I get up in the morning and I get right on my knees. She says, man, I'm so impressed with you, Jimmy. You get right on your knees. I said, honey, I'm just rolling out of bed. <laughs> I says, I ain't start praying yet, you know. And anyway, just, yeah. Right? Come on, have any of you ever done that? I remember when I was so close to Jesus, right? And then it went away. I, I remember when my walk with the Lord was so tight, I was so anointed, and then it went away, right? I remember when I used to read the Bible every day, and then I stopped. I remember when I used to be honest, then I started telling little white lies, because all of us know a black lie is different than a white lie, you know? And if there is a black lie, I want a Puerto Rican lie. I said that already. I think we should have a lie, too. And you Dominicans, you ought to get one, too. We should all have a lie, you know? You know? And it should be just as good as a white lie. Right or wrong? Just, just you know, I mean, a lie is a lie, you know. And, and if you get a lie, then we want to lie. Black people got a lie. White people got a lie. Why can't us Ricans have a lie? You know? I'm just, I'm just, I'm just, look, look, man. This is the stuff that keeps me up at night. You know? You get a lie, you get a lie. Why can't we have one? We paid our dues, too. You know, I mean, we ain't, you know, we ain't here to blow nothing up. 
except the welfare system. But anyway, <laughs> I could cheat a little bit on that tax refund. Why am I close to God? Hmm. Boy, there's a fine-looking woman. I don't feel so close to God. That's a fine-looking man. I don't feel so close to God. Just, just a little compromise. I'm not feeling like I used to feel with God. I don't like her anyway. I don't feel so close to God. It's just sex. I don't feel so close to God. It's almost sex. I don't feel so close to God. Right? I don't need sex. I got the internet. <laughs> I don't feel so close to God. You see, the question is, the closer you move to the world, the further you move away from God. Are you following the message? The closer you move to the world, the further you move away from God. And we need to get back to God. Let me, uh, let me bring it home here. He told them, speak, uh, speak to us in, the, in that other language. Take me back to Mark, I believe it is. Mark 15, 34 and 35. Uh, yeah, 34 and 35. What kind of cry was this? You want to know what the cry was? I told you I wouldn't tell you to the end. Anybody figure it out yet? If the first cry was a prayer of forgiveness, the second cry was what? A promise of salvation. The third cry was what? A sign of affection, then the fourth cry is a cry of separation. He was separated from his father. You wonder why Jesus cried that? He was separated from his daddy, man. In order to save you, he had to be separated from his daddy. Daddy said, are you going to take on that sin? All, all that sin? He said, no, I'm not going to take on the sin. I'll take on the punishment for it. Well, the, the punishment is death. And then God says, if I look at you, you won't die. Come on now. He said, if I look at you, if I look at you, you won't die. He says, so if you're going to take on all their sin, i got to look away and you're going to feel so lonely and separated from me and disconnected. He says, but fear not. Because Jesus, God is the ultimate Arnold Schwarzenegger. He said, I'll be back. I'll be back in a minute. You know, we, 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 we had the opportunity. I went, I went with, the, with the Rob Lugs and, and uh, Dr. Cotton, a couple of other people. I got a, how many of you have seen that movie, The, the Passion? Yeah, good, good, good. We're going to rent a whole movie theater. And we're not going to rent it so we can take the church. I want you to take lost people. I'm going to buy tickets and you bring some. And don't be bringing your backslidden cousin with you, right? You know, who knows Jesus more than all of us, right? You know, you know we, we want you to bring somebody just, just messed up, screwed up, messed up. We're going to get them popcorn, a soda, and some Twizzlers. And then, and then, I'm serious, we're going to lead them to the Lord. We're going to go in there with, with 600, you know, two or 300 saved and 300 lost and come out with 600 on, on fire for God. I'm serious, man. I forget that. We took our whole church. <laughs> Good for you. Wow, you took your church to the movies. Isn't that nice? I'm sorry, I just, I'm dissing other people again. Praise God for them. Uh, uh, <laughs> I lost my train of thought. Was I on a train? You see what happens when you get older, Kim? Hmm. Yeah, I got you. Got you. I just, it just, the eyes are good. At 16 DPI, you can't miss it up here. Just every once in a while, people think I walk by here because it's just exercise. It's just take a little peek down there. That separation, man. Separates you when you feel like you've been separated from somebody. I've always been lonely all my life. How many of you have been like that? Suffered, trauma, feeling lonely in your heart? Sleep right next to somebody. Make love to them. And still feel lonely. Oh, you're right. Thank you for helping me out. Only me. I'm the only one left with my hand up. Right? Everybody says, I don't know what he's talking about. I have a good sex life. You know, just, just, right? <laughs> I told a story this morning. And I forgot it. I got it. The movie. That's where I was. You're supposed to help me with that. I was at the movie, Victor. The favorite part of the movie was what? What was your favorite part of the movie? 
Huh? When he rose again, good. You better like that. At the end of the story, I knew that. I read the book. So <laughs> just <laughs> now, what was your favorite part of the movie? broke my heart too. Favorite part of the movie? Anybody? Yeah. Simon, bro. That's right, man. After he touched it, he couldn't change. He was changed forever, wasn't he? Amen. Simon. Simon the uh, Cyrene, which means black man, by the way. Did you know that? Dark skinned. It means dark. It means dark. He always tried to pull the brothers out of that, you know? They carried a cross for him. You know? <laughs> I'm, I'm just, that whole North Philly's coming out of me. I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, yeah. Go ahead. Wow. Okay, favorite part of the... Come on, come on, go ahead. Yeah. Okay, go ahead. Okay, yeah. He smashed the snake. Genesis, it says, and, 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 and the heel of the sun shall bruise the serpent's head. Scripture came forth, right? F uh, favorite part, anybody else? Yeah. When he picked the cross up. Did you see it yet? No? We're going to take you. Anybody not see it yet? We need to take about 50 of you. I'll pay for you to go. If you go with me. How many of you go with me? I'll pay for you to go. I don't know how I'll do that yet. Board, don't worry. They're, they're, they're all like, oh my God, he's spending the money again. Don't worry about it. I'll, I'll, I'll work it out. There, there he goes again, you know what I mean? We, uh, we're going to have these people. You want to know what my favorite part was? And I'm going to end my sermon. Get, get my musicians up here. I'll, I'll end my message. I don't need to drill this long, man. You don't need to milk the cow when you just need a little milk. <laughs> all day you want to know what my favorite part was when the teardrop fell anybody uh, remember that now I know it's not in scripture but to me it validated something for me to me it validated it, it was like it was like the message is there but it's not seen to me it validated something to me, it validated this sermon. And here's what it validated. It validated the separation. He was saying, look, while you take on their death, he took it on and then he said, it is finished. And once he said, it is finished, he put his head down and he gave up the Holy Ghost and then this tear comes down. Bang! And everything changes. And folks, what that meant to me was that God was saying, my dear baby boy, he said, when you said in is finished and you gave up the ghost, he said, I stopped turning away and I turned back. And when I saw my one and only hanging on that tree for the sins of the world, and I saw the sin of the world and the blood covering it over, he said, I cried. He said, I turned back and I cried. Folks, how many of you today used to be real close to the cross how many of you used to be real close to God and somehow you've gotten far away there's the altar I would venture to say that that's a good place to start need me to lay a cross there for you so you can feel comfortable here this is like Burger King I'll let you have it your way seriously Bring it to the cross, man. Say, I need to get my stuff right, man. I've walked away. I've melted away. I've done some things that have taken me away, and I've been moving away. I've been moving away, and I need to get close to the cross. How many of you need it? Hey, listen, if, 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 if you want to make this cool, and as long as I don't bang your head with this, 